Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, a player's go-to return to serve is a backhand slice. How does it work out for him? Watch and find out. Is a backhand slice return a shot you sometime use in your game? Let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below. A big thank you to the YouTube channel Wise Pickleball for posting this video. Check out their channel and subscribe. Let's go. Here are the players. The team serving is the team comprised of 5.0 players. The team in the near court are not 5.0 players. And the player I am going to focus in on is the player right here. I'm going to focus in on his backhand slice return. And I am also going to talk about his third shots. So take a look. The question again is, is his backhand slice return effective? Does it have no effect or does it get him in trouble? Here's the first serve. Third shot drive. It hit the top of that. Hit him in the face. And that's just really unfortunate. I wear safety glasses. I really think everyone should because usually when you get hit in the face, it's because the ball bounces off of the net or it bounces off of your paddle. Here we go. Backhand slice return. And look how much top spin the player that hit it was able to put on it. It did not give the player who hit it enough time to get all the way to the non-volley zone. He got caught in the transition zone, and because he put slice spin on the ball, his opponent was able to put more top spin on the ball. Watch right here. There's a slice spin. There we go. At his feet, cannot get the ball over the net. I have a lot of respect for Zane Navratil. He has a video in which he points out that most professional players no longer put slice spin on a return and it's because when the person hitting the third shot if he chooses to hit a third shot drive he can put additional top spin on the ball because of the slice spin imparted by the return of serve if you'd like to check out that video simply click the link above it makes so much sense so in that instance putting slice spin on the ball was a negative I'm going to drive it again, and that shot's just popped up and put away. Slice spin again. Shallow return. Not able to get up to the net. Try to hit a fifth shot drive instead of a fifth shot drop from the back of the court. And he hit it right into the net. Now, I will say this. Playing against lower level players, if you put slice spin on the ball, it may have a positive effect. But playing against 5.0 players like these players are, that slice spin really has no effect and generally, they are not going to miss hit a ball just because it has slice spin on it. That's out of the court. Slice spin again. Easily returned. Uh, that's a good, he wasn't able to move up. So again, it just had no effect on the return with the third shot. He's gonna drive it, he's gonna drive it again. And that's the second time that he has driven every shot and the second time that he has hit the ball into the net. So it looks to me like he is pretty much totally a power player. Maybe he will change his technique if he gets too far behind, but so far, drive, 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 drive. No soft game. Nice shot. I've seen the guy in the red shirt play before. He's a very, very good player. And that's why the guys in the backcourt are 5.0 players with the around the post. Oh, good hands. That's out of the court. I think the score now is six to nothing. The 5.0 team is dominating. If you notice when they hit a return of serve, they do not put slice spin on the ball. If anything, they hit the return of serve with top spin. Slice spin had no effect. Nice. 
So that's the second around the post this player has hit. Why was he able to do that? When you are dinking cross court, if you hit the dink too close to the side of the court, an around the post can happen. So what happened was the player with the blue cap, he simply hit it too close to the uh, line on the outside of the court. Watch right here. There we go, around the post. Very easy. I say that. I haven't hit very many around the post in my pickleball career. So there's a free point for the team in the near court like they really needed it. The score now is eight to nothing. Slice spin again. Oh, he hit that one into the net. Maybe he uh, was unable to return that ball on the third shot because of the slice spin. But 5.0 players don't miss that shot very often. Drive the ball. Good defense. Oh, backed him up and can't get that one over the net. It's a nice shot by the player uh, in the backcourt in blue. A quick timeout to tell you about my online pickleball store, pickleballprintables.com, where you will find the coolest pickleball swag on the planet. T-shirts, coffee mugs, tumblers, totes, caps, and kiss cut stickers. 65 clear, crisp, and clean designs to choose from. Use the coupon code YouTube and get 10% off your first order. Dink in style. Go to www.pickleballprintables.com or click the link in the description below. Drive it. I'm going to reset it. That is so good. Again, I've seen the player in red play before. I think he is an excellent player. I've never seen his partner with the slice spin play before. I'm going to drive it right into the net. I mentioned before, he has yet to show that he can play a soft game. He has not dropped the third shot. He has not reset the ball. It's just so much of a power game. And there's a free point for the team in the backcourt. Even 5.0 players missed return of serves. Not sure what happened there. Drive it. Oh, got the roll of the top of the tape. And got the point. So they're making a little run right here. I think it may be 8 to 3, perhaps. Here comes a drive. Here comes the fish shot reset, and he just pops it straight up. That was nowhere close to being an effective shot. I mean, a 3.0 player could have put that ball away. Oh, he just missed that around the post. Nice reset. That's a really nice shot. I don't know if you noticed or not, but the players at the 5.0 level, they are continually talking to themselves, talking about what to do, where to be on the court. And uh, I really like that. Gonna drive it again right into his put away zone. Good defense, and he hits that out of the court for the unforced error. Way to hang in there by the player in red. Drive it. Oh, that's out of the court. Another free point. I think they have five points now, and two of them were given to them. Oh, that was almost another free point. I don't think they've lost their concentration after being up, what, eight to nothing? But the team in the backcourt has made a little run here. Backhand slice right into the net. There you go. That's the issue with trying to put so much slice spin on the ball, especially if you're a 3.0 player, a 3.5 player. I'm not saying that he is. I don't think he is. But I see so many 3.0 and 3.5 players just try to put as much slice spin on the ball as possible, and all it really does is get them in trouble. This is a really good point here. Nope, oh, missed it. All 
Nice third shot. Backhand flick. That is an advanced shot. 5.0 players uh, do that. I don't see very many 3.0, 3-point flyer players hit a uh, backhand flick. There's that slice spin again. Really no effect. That's out of the court. Drive. Good defense. Too high. Oh, got it. Oh, into the net. Another unforced error. There's another mistake with the backhand slice. Tried to slice a backhand third shot drop into the kitchen, and he failed. Here we go. Third shot drive. Fifth shot drive. Seventh shot drive right out of the court. Just has not shown any ability to slow the game down, to try to reset the ball to move forward. What I have learned is that a third shot drive is perfectly okay, but if you follow it up with a fifth shot drive and a seventh shot drive, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Ha! <laughs> Missed the put away. And uh, I don't know, 5.0, he's kind of made some errors that I would not expect him to make, but hey, it happens at all levels. Oh, and that's out of the court. Oh, got lucky. That's the second time that has happened. Out of the court. Scores 10-5. I really thought the team in the backcourt had more points than five. There's a backhand slice. It goes out of the court, and that's the game. I think it's appropriate that the game ended on a backhand slice that went out of the court. And there's just another reason not to hit one. So there you have it. In all, the player hit 12 backhand slices. He did so when either returning a serve or hitting a third shot. Out of the 12, he hit four either out of the court or into the net. One caused him to pop the ball up on the fifth shot and his opponents put it away. Six others had no effect and only one caused his opponent to hit the ball into the net. So 50% of the time, his backhand slice return had no effect. 41.6% of the time, it cost his team a point or the opportunity to win a point. Only 8.3% of the time was his backhand slice effective. So should this player reconsider putting slice on his backhand when he is returning a serve? Let me know what you think by leaving a comment in the comments section below. That's it from Pick a Ball, Pick Apart. I really hope you learned something from watching this video. And if you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. This is Rory saying, as always, thanks for watching and see you on the court.